Stan Cedar. How, uh, how's your ex-wife doing, old fella? I'm going to talk fast, so you're going to have to listen fast. I've added another uh, section on my website. The entire transcript will be on Rumble, of course, as well, um, with all the sources. Stan Cedar's continuing his uh, white supremacy. Oh, these white people are plotting to murder people. And he just keeps... Stan has a lot of free time. And he's bipolar, so he's just going to try to yell over everybody. So I've added a whole bunch to this detailed essay I have. And uh, his whole white supremacy nonsense has been nuked. So let's go through some of this. And uh, it will also serve as a good debunking of that, that fat little hobbit from Black Hawk County, Iowa, Chris Schwartz. And his, Ooh, we're not safe anywhere because I'm projecting Waterloo's hood rat culture on the entire nation. Uh, no. According to the state of Illinois, Cook County had 668 cases of murder in 2022, and that's a homicide rate of 13.074. Homicide rate slash murder rate. That's slightly lower than the calculated rate on another page because I went and checked that too, just to make sure. Because sometimes you got to, sometimes even these great people at running these state websites uh, don't get everything right. Feel free to peruse previous years, but Cook County is consistently one of the most murder-laden counties in America, and most of its problems, and this goes back to what I did in a previous video, um, two-thirds of U.S. counties, over two-thirds, have less than two murders. So, when you can narrow it down to a third of U.S. counties, and then it's a hand, well, more than a handful, but it's not half the nation. It's a couple, 100, 200 counties are really bad, and Cook County is one of them. And uh, most of the problems in Cook County can be drilled down to Chicago City. Chicago is much more diverse than Illinois in mass and even Cook County. Cook County has 40.6% of Illinois' population, but 76.5% of its murders. If you add Winnebago County to Cook County, that takes the total percentage of all murders in Illinois in those two counties, 79.26% of all murders, and that's 42.85% of Illinois' population. The rest of the state in last year had a murder rate of 2.517. So, yeah, if you hear anybody, oh, white supremacy. No, it's the diverse areas run by Democrats. I've dug through enough of this data. There are some fairly large counties in Illinois and Texas, southern Illinois, of course, that have well over 100,000 people, and it's not a war zone. Now, granted, I understand if you got a city of a million people, your chances of having less than two murders are virtually nil. But you know what I mean. Those are the places where the homicide rate is the highest. And like I said, Iowa has a boatload of counties. And nobody lives there. It's rural. Yeah, and you add them all together, and that's a lot of the state, though. So pound, I'm going to pound that through any of these. Uh, if any dumbass crats want to challenge me on that, I'll steamroll you. Good luck. Blackhawk County, Iowa, is a lean, dumb crack county, although in the midterms, Grassley narrowly lost it, and Kim Reynolds won it substantially. And nobody got close to 60% in any statewide election since 2016. Compare Iowa's demographics with the demographics of Blackhawk County, uh-oh, and the main problem child in that county, Waterloo. You'll see it is much more diverse than a lily-white, racist Iowa. Even though the percentage of their population that is black is far lower than the national average, it is much higher than the Iowa average. Black Hawk County, Iowa is consistently one of the most dangerous counties in Iowa in contrast to the uber white counties in western Iowa. You can call me racist, but you can't call me wrong. Last year, Black Hawk County had eight murders and a murder rate of 6.14 per 100,000. Stick that in your pipe and poof it. The last three years, their murder rate was 5.7, much, much higher than the Iowa average. It is an outlier in a state that has a boatload of counties with no murder. I realize their contribution to the national total is paltry, just making a point. Waterloo is, however, a staunch Democrat stronghold. You can dig through the Secretary of State data if you want and challenge me on it if you want, but you'll lose. Uh, Waterloo is a Democrat staunch, a Democrat stronghold, and it is a dump. So then I started going through some uh, more states here. I'll, I'll try to truncate this a little bit. California, I'm going to find the problem children in California. And again, I have all this transcript posted so you can read the whole thing and see what I'm skipping. Just I'm giving you the gist. If you take Alameda County, L.A. County, San Francisco County, San Joaquin County, and San Bernardino County and Solano County. You take all those counties, they had 56.02% uh, of all of California's murders last year. They're less than 40% of the population. 
So you can see right there, although California had very few counties last year that didn't have any murders or less than two. So it's getting a little worse out there, especially in Los Angeles. But uh, yeah, so, long, so I, I named him off. Yeah, less than 40% of California's population has over 56% of the murders. Now, Minnesota, this will make your eyes explode, although I wasn't surprised. You take just Hennepin, Hennepin and Ramsey counties. The two biggest Democrat strongholds in the entire state of Minnesota. Most counties don't vote Democrat in Minnesota, but there are the few that do, those are the two big ones. Minnesota had 182 murders in 2022. And by the way, their murder rate in the last three years has gone through the roof. Minnesota had 182 murders in 2022. Those two counties, which are uber Democrat, and I've got the data for that too, so feel free to check that. I've given you plenty to learn on. Those two counties had 76.37% of all of Minnesota's homicides. They are only 31.42% of Minnesota's population. Surprise! Missouri is another one that sticks out. You take Jackson County, St. Louis County, and St. Louis City. Those three entities right there. By the way, Missouri, St. Louis City, Missouri, last year had a murder rate of 69.789. Holy Crap. Missouri had 634 murders last year, and 79.02% of them were in St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and Jackson County, which are basically three of the only four counties in Missouri that uh, vote Democrat consistently. And they're all very, now they're not lean Democrat, they're solid Democrat. They had 32.26% of the state population, but 79% of the homicides. <gasps> Surprise! And are those cities more diverse than Missouri? Uh, surprise! Oh my gosh! If you don't know this, you're a retard. Or your name's Sam Cedar. Stan Cedar, sorry, I got it wrong. Pulaski County, Arkansas. <laughs> they had a homicide rate last year of 26.807. And yeah, I added a whole bunch of counties here. Uh, Pulaski, Jefferson County, Arkansas. Phillips County. Now, Phillips County is interesting because it doesn't have many people. There's one city there, Helena, West Helena, which if I remember right, it is black majority or plurality. Very teeny county, but that one town, about 12,000 people, Helena, West Helena, is akin to a war zone. Last year, they had five murders in that little town. Holy moly. Pulaski County, Jefferson County, Phillips County, and Crittenden County. And I also added St. Francis and Lee County. And those counties are only 18.27% of Arkansas's population, but they had almost 54% of its murders. Can you believe that? Most of them are solid or lean Democrat counties too, by the way, just so you know. Then you take Franklin County. Ohio is another one that'll uh, surprise you. Maybe, well, doesn't surprise me because I know this and I looked it all up. Franklin County, Ohio, Cuyahoga County, Hamilton County, Lucas County, Summit County, and Montgomery County. You take all those, those counties had a collective 559 murders last year, 76.57% of Ohio's statewide total, yet they are only 41.5% of Ohio's total population. I added some data in there too, just for you. Like, for example, Summit County had 46 murders, but 43 of them are in Akron. Hmm. Surprised? Lucas County had 66 murders, and 65 of them are in Toledo. So those of you who watch uh, On Patrol Live, uh, there is a police department in Toledo there, and I always tell my dad, we're going to see some crime tonight, because Toledo last year had a homicide rate of 15.469. There's just... Uh, oh, no, Toledo is 24.408. Uh, Lucas County was 15.469. So outside of Toledo and Lucas County, you're pretty safe. Uh, Hamilton County. Uh, well, I, I, I'm going to skip that. But anyways, uh, oh, Montgomery County had 49 murders last year. 33 of them were in Dayton. So you can see in a lot of these counties, it's not the whole county even that's a train wreck. It's one city. Now, there are some where it is. But most of them, uh, Wisconsin is a good example of who I'm moving to next, where I'm, I'm not moving to it, but we're moving to that next in this essay. Milwaukee County and Kenosha County are the two problem children in Milwaukee, Lily White, or Lily White, Wisconsin. And the problem in Milwaukee County is Milwaukee City, and the problem in Kenosha County is Kenosha City. 
Last year, Milwaukee County had 220 murders. 212 of them were in Milwaukee. Kenosha County had... How many? I think all the murders in Kenosha County were in Kenosha City. Anyways, outside of those two counties, this is outside of Milwaukee County and Kenosha County, Wisconsin had a murder rate of 1.851 per 100,000. You're safe in Wisconsin so long as you stay away from Milwaukee and Kenosha counties and specifically Kenosha City and Milwaukee City. So, uh, yeah, Milwaukee's 15.59% of Wisconsin resides in Milwaukee County, yet they had almost 70% of uh, the murders in the entire state. And Milwaukee County and Kenosha County had almost 72% of all the murders in Milwaukee, or in Wisconsin, and just a skosh under 18.5% of the state lives in those two counties. Now, here, Pennsylvania is another one. You take, you take Philly County, Allegheny County, and Delaware counties. Those, just those three counties were more than 69% of Pennsylvania's homicide la last year. Delaware County, for uh, example, had a homicide rate of 7.823 per 100,000, and it's Chester and Upper Darby that are the problems. Now, you add Dauphin County, uh, Pennsylvania, that as well. And those four counties, I had it as five, and that's wrong. Uh, yeah, I'll change that. Those four counties, we're talking Philly, Allegheny, Delaware, and Dauphin. Those four counties I've covered have 28.24% of Pennsylvania's entire population, but over 72% of all of its murders. Now, if you move to New York State, you got Bronx County, Kings County, Monroe County, Erie County, and again, I've got all the data on this. I'm truncating. Bronx County, Kings, uh, Monroe, Erie, and Erie, added to Albany, Albany, and Onondaga, and Syracuse is the main problem child there. New York State had 790 murders in 2022. The counties above had 459 murders, or 58.1% of the New York total. Those counties have less than a third of the state's population. And are those counties uh, diverse enough for you guys? I'm just wondering, is the diversity good? If you add the same counties above that I mentioned and add Queens and New York counties, they had 52.5% of New York's population, but 77.84% of New York's murders. They are all uber Democrat or lean Democrat. You see New York's murders are not spread out everywhere. They are clustered. Iowa had 54 murders in 2022, but Blackhawk, Webster, Story, Polk, Lynn, and Scott counties had 32 of them, or 59.25%, and those counties are only 36.57% of Iowa's population. I will also mention that each of those counties has basically one city that is the problem child. The rest is safe. Just to keep hammering that point home. And those cities are Waterloo, Fort Dodge, Ames, Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, and Davenport. Outside of those six counties, Iowa had a murder rate of 1.083 per 100,000. And Blackhawk County, Iowa supervisor Chris Schwartz thinks Iowa is as dangerous as Waterloo, Fort Dodge, or the Des Moines hood. Uh, no. You're an, only an idiot would say that. Or someone who is a fascist. We are not un or under assault everywhere like this idiot says so. Uh, he thinks Western Iowa is a war zone akin to that dump called Waterloo. And uh, it's not. Maybe uh, tell your constituents, Chris, if you're listening. And Stan, you could relay this to your idiots that listen to you. Keep your legs closed till you're married. And take care of your kids. As soon as you find out the baby mama's pregnant, leaving is probably not a good idea. And that's what your people who vote for people like you do. They are scumbags. And Colorado had 382 murders in 2022. And the following counties, Boulder, Denver, Pueblo, Adams, El Paso, and Weld had 79.31% of all Colorado's murders in 2022. Those counties only have 48.43% of Colorado's population, their collective murder rate was 10.712. If you add Jefferson County, which has a low murder rate overall to the total above, those counties have 318 murders, 83.24% of all of Colorado's murders, and those counties, only seven of Colorado's 64, have 58.3% of Colorado's total population, meaning that 41.7% of Colorado has a murder rate of less than 2.7 per 100,000. All the counties that I mentioned, except El Paso and Weld, are either lean Democrat or solid Democrat. Uh, Denver, it's getting real ugly. Real bad. 
I got all, we got a long ways to go. Texas data. Uh, the following counties, Harris, Dallas, Travis, Bexar, Webb, El Paso, all Democrat leaning or solid Dem, had 59.24% of all the murders in Texas, yet they only have 39.64% of the population. And if you add those counties with Nooses, Tarrant, and Bell, they have 70.18% of Texas's murders in 2022, but less than half of the state population. And the murder rate of all those counties and mass was 9.622. Again, those counties are Harris, Dallas, Travis, Bexar, Webb, El Paso, Nooses, Tarrant, and Bell. So uh, that means just over half of Texas has a murder rate of about 3.9. Not great, but not exactly a war zone either. You know, you can see how uh, the homicide rate in those cities I mentioned is more, much more than two times higher. Uh, Oregon. The following counties, Multnomah, Washington, Clackamas, Marion, and Lane had uh, almost 80% of the murders in the entire state but they have just over 60%, 60% of the population. Multnomah alone, which is where Portland's at, which is a city that is disintegrating rapidly, that county alone had 55.72% of all of Oregon's murders, but they only have 18.75% of Oregon's population. And outside of those five counties, Oregon had a 2022 murder rate of 2.304. <laughs> and Port Multnomah is a uber, uber, uber Democrat county. And it is the biggest problem, child. I'm going to skip over Nevada. You can read it uh, if you want. Just trying to truncate this a little bit. Washington State. If you take King County, Pierce County, Clark County, Yakima County, Spokane County, and Pacific County, those counties only had uh, 50 points. 58.33% of Washington's population, but had 70.57% 70 of all its murders, and their murder rate was just under 6 per 100,000. And uh, the entire state of Washington state had a murder rate of just under 5 per 100,000. Now, King and Pierce counties alone, two big counties, King is uber Democrat, Pierce is merely lean Democrat, those counties alone had 51.04% of all of Washington's murders, yet only had 41% of the state population. Their murder rate was 6.136 per 100,000. Compare the demographics of those counties against the Washington state average. Wink, wink. Outside of those counties, that's outside of King, Pierce, Clark, Yakima, Sp Spokane, and Pacific, Washington state had a murder rate of 3.483. You get it now? I will try to get through this quick. I looked at arrest data. Uh-oh. And murder victim data. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Iowa, the Hawkeye State, is 4.4% black. Yet, from, and all this data will be 2020 to 2022, unless I say otherwise. Yet, in that time frame, 48.48% of the arrestees for murder in Iowa were black. And from 2020 to 2022, of the 196 murder victims in Iowa where the race of the victim was known, 42.85% of the victims were black. It's institutional racism, I tell you. Now in Texas, from 2020 to 2022, 42.57% of the murder victims were black. In a state that is 13.4% black. And of the arrestees from 2020 to 2022, in Texas, where the race of the arrestee was known, 49.27% of them were black. Now, Texas has got some more data on this, and I, I'm not going to go over that, but I've linked to it and screenshotted it and everything. So you can uh, have fun with that. But put it this way, disproportionately, a lot of black people are getting murdered in Texas and getting arrested for murder. And it's white supremacy that's causing that. It, no, it's a culture problem. And when you look through those, I didn't catalog this data, but look at the percentage of the population of states, you know, Asian. And how often are Asians getting arrested for murder? And how often are, they're not killing each other in the hood? It's culture. But Stan Cedar and his ilk don't want to fix that because that means black people might not be a reliable Democrat vote if they, and there are some black, there's a black couple that goes to my dad's church. They've got three kids and one in the oven. He's got a master's degree. Uh-oh, that's why they're doing so well. Oh my gosh, they figured it out. But you don't, Stan Cedar, the divorcee who has a, can't 
cultivate a marriage himself. Aren't, Stan, don't you have a failed marriage to fix, fat ass? Uh, he can't do a marriage himself. He wants black people to stay poor and downtrodden because that's a rely. As soon as they, if they move into the middle class, oh my gosh, they're upper middle, cla upper middle class, which is why if there were Asian engineers stowing way over the border, they wouldn't want them in here. They want people who aren't, who are going to be dependent on government. And you don't want that, Stan. So instead you say, racism. No, it's culture. Keep your legs closed until you're married. And if the baby mama does get pregnant, don't run off. Just saying. I digress. In Illinois, from 2020 to 2022, of all the murder arrestees where the race of the offender was known, 66.04% of them were black. Illinois is 14.7% black. And Illinois murder victims from 2020 to 2022, 72.51% of them are black. Oh my gosh. Surprise. This country's uh, in dire straits, folks. Rhode Island, during that same time frame, 51.25% of all their murder victims were black. And Rhode Island is only 9.1% black. And of all the arrestees, and it's basically one county in Rhode Island has all the problems, Providence County. The other four are uber safe. 53.33% oh, of all the arrestees in Rhode Island from 2020 to 2022 for murder were black. 53.33%. California. Sorry, I hit the microphone. Here's verbatim from their 2022 report. Of the homicides where the victim's race was identified, 46.1% of the victims were Hispanic, 31% were black. This is for last year only. 16.6% were white and 6.3% were of other race slash ethnic, ethnic groups. And 46.3% uh, of the homicide arrestees were Hispanic and 30.1% were black. 18.4% were white. California is only 6.5% black. Colorado. Pertaining to victims of murder of the 1,032 victims where their race was known, 23.25% of them were black. Colorado is 4.7% black. And of all the arrestees for murder in Colorado, 2020 to 2022, where they knew the race of the arrestee, 20.29% of them were black. So that's not as disproportionate, but still very. Now, Minnesota will make your head explode. Of the 197 murder arrestees where the race of the attacker is known for last year, 66.49% of them were black. In 2021, it was more of the same. Of the 171 offenders where the race is known, 61.98% were black. Minnesota is only 7.6% black. And the Twin Cities are full of Black Lives Matter virtue, virtue signaling white folks who have watched their murder rates skyrocket. And I couldn't find anything... No 2022 data uh, in Minnesota pertaining to the race of victims, but I guarantee most of it's in the Twin Cities and they're black. So, yeah, defund the police up in the Twin Cities so these lunatics can run wild. In Arkansas in 2022, 73.65% of the arrestees where the race of the arrestee is known for murder were black. 73.65%, Arkansas is 15.6% black. And in 2021... Of the homicide arrestees in Arkansas where the race of the offender was known, 67.06% .06 of the offenders were black. Arkansas is 15.6% black. Oregon. Oregon's 2.3% black, but from 2020 to 2022, of all the arrestees for murder where the race was known, it was 18.56% of them were black, excuse me. And same time frame, 25.04% of the murder victims in Oregon were black. Pennsylvania. Get a load of this. From 2020 to 2022, 62.52%, that's 734 people, were arrested uh, for murder in Pennsylvania, 1,174 overall, but 734 of them, or 62.52%, uh, were black. And in the same time frame, 2020 to 2022, of the 3,088 victims, 2,093, or 67.77% of them, were black. So... Yeah, very disproportionate. Pennsylvania is 12.2% black. Let that sink in. Missouri. Woo. Get ready. For 2020 to 2022, Missouri is 11.7% black. 2020 to 2022, 4,911 of the 7,425 arrestees for murder 
in Missouri were black. That's 66.14%. Very disproportionate. Ooh, white supremacy. It's St. Louis County, St. Louis City, and Jackson County, you idiots. And you know who you are when I say idiots, right, Stan? Now, murder victims in Missouri. Of the 10,896 victims, excluding unknown, 6,861 of them, or 62.96% of them, were black. Buku, black on black murder happening in the show me state. Show me black on black murder by the truckload in Democrat jurisdictions like St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and Jackson County. I think you get the point by now. And this concludes my detailed nuking of Stan Cedar's white supremacy bullcrap. Uh, the most dangerous enemy to a young, to a black person, and particularly a young black, black male in the U.S., is another young black male and our school system. And Stan doesn't want these people. He's not going to call them out for abandoning their children because he can't cultivate a decent relationship anyway. Stan Cedar's never had a successful relationship with the opposite gender of his species because he's a lunatic. And uh, he doesn't want these black communities who have been run by Democrats and run into the freaking ground for 60 years. He doesn't want them. He wants them to continue to be victims because of their reliable Democrat vote. Now the blacks that uh, have two parents in the house probably going to have a much more stable upbringing. What kind of, Stan, what kind of relationship do you have with your daddy other than, you know, the white privilege and he getting you some jobs in New York City? Did he, other than that, did he ignore you? Because I'm thinking there's some problems there. A lot of it goes back to the father. But anyways, uh, see the links in the video description. Uh, I've got the entire transcript on Rumble. Uh, don't thank me now for the beatdown. Now file this one under all lives matter. When black people kill black people, they don't come out and do this crap. The only time they do this crap is when a white person touches them. They're the racist. They're the racist. It's wrong for a white cop to kill a black person, that's for sure. But if it matters, it should matter at all times. So what are you fighting for? It's a violence problem. The blacks kill blacks in black neighborhoods every single day. I've never seen a black life matter in those neighborhoods. Never! But if a white person kill a black person, black life matter. Stop the hypocrisy. Nobody gets this seriously. That's my point. Violence is wrong, period. It's not about blacks. You agree that whites kill black whites too, right? Have you seen any white person coming out and saying white life matter? You guys actually so feel blacks are oppressed. I am black, I'm not oppressed. That's I am free. free. Like, I do what I want, you have the skills, this is a country where you have the skills, you want to do what you want, you do it. Stop, stop forcing on people to accept that they're oppressed, they are not, I am not oppressed, I am black. Black people are black more than any race, where's the black and matter? Why don't you go? You're standing at home. Why don't you start? I'm not carrying anything saying black lives matter, I know I matter. Why don't you start? Yet another black face of white supremacy. Now yesterday we talked about the widespread rioting that took place in Chicago. Developing overnight, another large teen gathering in downtown Chicago, ending with two teens shot. Hundreds of teens flooded Michigan Avenue last night, smashing car windows, trying to get into Millennium Park, prompting a major police response. Officers were escorting tourists and visitors to their cars in the Millennium Park parking garage. Shots were fired in the crowd around 9 o'clock last night near Michigan and Washington. Two teen boys were wounded, both in fair condition. No one's in custody for that shooting. One Chicago native was stunned at what she was witnessing. Well, I see out here is completely ludicrous, to be honest with you. I'm a part of what I see. I'm from Chicago, and I understand kids having a good time, but it's simply bad parenting. We have to do better as parents. Our kids should not be out here. Where are their parents at? That's my question. Another male driver was injured when teens started jumping on his windshield, smashing it. Then they beat the man up as he sat in the driver's seat. He was taken to Northwestern Hospital. That Chicago resident said, it's bad parenting. Where are the parents, she said. So we got on this rant because of Joe Scarborough, <laughs> who's on his own rant over how gun control is so important that we should get rid of the filibuster over this one. Play four. You look at voting rights. You look at guns, abortion. you look at abortion, you look at all of these things. And I must say, I've always been a strong believer in uh, the filibuster. I've always loved the idea that the House is hot, the Senate cools things down. No more. It doesn't work. Mm. When 6% when of Americans can allow the continued proliferation of guns without background checks and the killing of children, 
it's time to get rid of the filibuster. The radical minority can hide behind the filibuster and do it. Enough is enough. Get rid of the filibuster so we could have universal background checks. Also, pre to pretend that the conservative base is not opposed to the killing of children. This is the worst kind of demagoguery just, you will ever come across in American politics. I mean, it is the ugliest, the most dishonest, and the stupidest. But Joe Scarborough, he is a firm believer in whatever puts more money in Joe Scarborough's bank account and whatever gets more Democrats to clap for him as he pretends to be a centrist or whatever. This, 